to download the TrackMate RC software, go to trackmateracing.com. Click support. Actually, just go on support here, then go to RC Lab Counter. That kind of makes sense. Go to RC Lab Counter, download software 756, latest version. And it should pop up in your downloads. That would be click here, click downloads, and there it is. Open. It will open when it's completed. There we go. Uh, don't click on this one. You got to click on setup right here. Double click setup. Now, if you get this blue screen, here it says don't run. We're going to click on more info. Because this program is not downloaded many times, um, it suspects that it could be a virus, but it's not. So, uh, so what did I do there? I just clicked on where it said more info, then I click on run anyways. Install. And it runs. And it will also create a shortcut that will appear on your desktop. And that's it. You just downloaded version 756. It will say it right here. Make sure it says RC Lab Counter and don't download the one for slot cars. They're two different programs. So if you have, if you purchase the RC TrackMate RC Lab Counter, you need to be running this. It's also compatible with other software, but I won't cover that in this video. Once the program is running, you may want to install the USB driver. So you click uh, help and then install USB driver and click extract, next, accept, next, finish, and done. Now you will need to unplug your USB cable, plug it back in and restart the program. And then you're gonna go to settings and you should see the COM port over here and then everything should work. While I'm here, I'll just keep it in uh, keyboard mode. I don't need hardware for testing. So it's going to be in keyboard mode. And the other thing to uh, keep in mind is you got your help over here. You got your manual. And you could read through this about installing and some shortcut keys, etc. Okay, I'm going to show you how to enter names into the program. Let's say you got your transponders and you want to associate some names to the transponder numbers. You would just click racers, click racers, edit racers and transponders. And uh, you can use the number on the transponder or you can use the number that shows up here. This works all the time. Even if you're not racing, if the transponder goes underneath the bridge, the number will appear here. So you can just enter the last uh, four digits Like that and done now you could change the color here so if you want to change the color of this uh, click on it there's two ways of uh, entering the color you can use the basic colors here you just click let's say you want yellow you just click here and uh, the color that you're going to be picking will show up here and you click OK or if you want something custom you click here, but then you have to click over here. See this bar here? And that, that color is changing. So if I want this color now, or if I want to go into red, I can kind of, well, this is red. I can kind of get different, uh, different reds. And then click OK. And now it's going to be red. The cursor is there right right now. That's why it's blue. If I go back here, these, that's the color you're going to get. And this color is going to show up um, over here. Let's uh, add some names here. There, Bob. 
And in the settings, you could also have the whole line colored like that. There are different race formats in the RC lap counter. You have practice lap time and qualifying laps. So if you put on time, we're only concerned with the time, the number of laps here, which is grayed out. That's why it's grayed out as no bearing on a time race and vice versa. If I put on a lap race, we don't care about the time. We just want to enter a number of laps we're going to do. Minimum lap time, if you're wondering what that is, uh, you set this below the best possible lap. The reason you want to do that is if a racer pulls a U-turn underneath the bridge, you don't want it to count a double lap. Or if he takes a shortcut, you don't want it to, uh, to count a second lap. So what you do is if it takes 10 seconds to do your lap, for example, you can maybe set this to 9 seconds. And then now, if the lap is below nine seconds, it won't count because it's probably due to pulling a U-turn or taking a shortcut or something like that. So that's what that's for. It's to avoid double lap counts. Uh, I mean, if you set this to, to one, it would certainly work. One or two would certainly work. It's just that you don't have that safety feature of avoiding double lap counts. One exciting feature about this program is the ability to view races uh, race data on other devices such as your iPad, iPhone, Android. Uh, you can view uh, something that would look like this on a on another device. And I'll show you how to do that. You click server over here. Uh, once you have that uh, running, you may you may get a a screen like this. Just minimize it. Uh, once that's done. You're going to see an IP address that shows up at the bottom here. So now if I launch a browser, you'd be doing this on a different computer probably because you want to see it on a different computer. Uh, you just type in this IP address that shows up at the bottom. So that's a colon 89999. The IP address on your computer is going to be different. And this is an internal IP address, so it doesn't matter if you see it. Uh, if you want to see the live race data, just click on live race data. And there you go, you have the data there. I'll minimize this and give you, a, give you an example. And like this. Now let's minimize. And now if I go here, actually, Got to put the two windows next to each other so you could actually see it happen. I'm going to run some laps here. And as you can see, it gets updated. That's a sound you heard in the background. I could disable the sounds. That was a sound for your personal best lap. So that's how that works. Another interesting feature is you can view uh, lap times from previous races like this. You can view summary from previous races like this. Uh, you can also notice there's a lot of files in there and the options you can automatically delete files after a certain amount of days. So it will automatically delete them so you don't get like hundreds of text files in there. There are a few hidden features that are not maybe intuitive, but are useful. So for example, I can hit S to start a race. So I use the keyboard, letter race S, over. Just to, uh, to start a race. So I can start, I can pause, over. and etc. I could also click on the flag, Yellow flag. to pause it. So when the car is going underneath the bridge, it won't count any laps. Green and then flag. Click on it again; it goes green. Go. Go. Another shortcut is if you're in practice Race mode. Over.
and you do laps, you can you can reset the best lap by hitting the numeric key on a keyboard to uh, to reset. I'm in keyboard mode right now, so it's not going to work. But if you weren't, if you were actually using transponders, you could actually reset uh, the best lap when you're in practice mode. <clears throat> the other feature that is a bit hidden is you can click on the name here and edit uh, the name, or you can just go to racers, edit racers and transponders. That's another way. So you can do this live even while the race is running. You can change names, add transponders during a race. Really handy. <clears throat> Another thing that may be um, what you might be wondering about is this number here. So every time a transponder goes underneath the bridge, transponder ID will appear here. And this is the number of hits or the number of times it was read. So if it's only reading once or twice, there could be an installation problem with your transponder. Say you want this number to be higher. So three, four, five, six times maybe. Uh, if you can't get it, uh, you know, up up there, the reads, uh, you can give us a call and I can help you out. Uh, it could be that uh, there's too much paint on your body and a transponder can't shoot through it. It could be that the angle of your transponder is not correct. Um, but normally, yeah, it's no issue if you put your bridge at 16 to 22 inches high. For a 10th scale, for mini-Zs, I'd put the bridge at 8 inches high. 